Hi there, Stephanie here. Today I'd like to try to address a question that I get very often, especially at the middle of the year, especially from first grade teachers whose students might be screened for the first time with oral reading fluency, like you would find in a cadence reading assessments. So the question usually comes, why aren't those fluency passages decodable? Why are we using this non-decodable text in screening first graders at the middle of the year? So I think that is important to clarify that oral reading fluency is designed as a curriculum-based measure. It's probably the original curriculum-based measurement or CBM. And CBM is constructed to be what's called a general outcomes measure or GOM. Uh, general outcomes measures function sort of like the Dow Jones Industrials or the S&P 500 as an index of overall health of the economy, for example. General outcomes measures like oral reading fluency function as overall indices of health of reading performance. So not meant to measure um, only the task that's part of the assessment, but that assessment is so powerful because it's giving you this general indication of the much broader construct of reading comprehension. So the uh, screening assessment at the middle of first grade, you might be thinking, um, you know, this is too hard. Why am I making my students do this? I'm just teaching them these basic decoding patterns. And there's a lot of patterns in that text at the middle and end of first grade that are not decodable. So think about the big picture of indicating reading comprehension. That's what that oral reading fluency screening is doing for you. So it's designed to keep things from being too frustrating. So after three seconds, you supply the word to the student. The goals are quite low, especially at the middle of first grade, designed to give you those minimum expectations. So if students don't meet those minimum benchmarks for reading accurately and fluently, the next steps would be obviously to look at the NWF performance, the PSF performance, test backwards to, to really uncover the root of that reading comprehension problem. But if the student does do well, reads accurately, fluently, and for meaning on the middle of your oral reading fluency screening, then that allows you to know you should accelerate for that student. You should be moving beyond perhaps the uh, skills that are being taught in the first grade classroom. So it's really helpful and useful for differentiation. Um, so the idea is if students were only assessed on decodable text, it would be not possible to make those kinds of predictions of future reading health that oral reading fluency helps us to make. And it wouldn't allow us to do quite as much differentiation as we can do with ORF. So we really need both kinds of measurement, right? And the measurement in how a student is doing in reading decodable text is happening in your lesson, should be happening in your lesson. Many uh, instructional or intervention programs will have sort of like a mastery uh, test, some kind of a criteria reading the decodable text that includes the patterns, only the patterns that you've taught up to that point in time and you're not moving on to the next pattern until the student can read that text, that decodable text, with a certain degree of accuracy and automaticity. Those kinds of mastery assessments are often built into intervention and instructional programs, and we need those. You can think about that as short-term measurement, but the function of oral reading fluency for screening and progress monitoring would be this overall indicator of reading health and the ability to predict future reading comprehension and to measure reading comprehension. And keep in mind that, that ORF is designed to be formative assessment, that decodable assessment as part of mastery monitoring within your reading program, that's like short-term measurement, that's like summative assessment, ORF is designed to be that formative assessment. You are checking in on how a student is doing on reading comprehension, perhaps even before you expect reading comprehension to really be solid and in place. And that's the part that can feel sometimes 
like a little bit unfair to students, right? But I hope that this helps to explain a little bit about the design of the assessment, the purpose, and to help keep it in perspective for you. The really most important takeaway is students are going to do well in the middle of first grade on oral reading fluency when, and probably only when, they have done okay above the benchmark standard on phoneme segmentation and on both scores of nonsense word fluency, right? So the, that's the scenario in which we expect students to do okay on ORF. And if they're not doing okay on ORF, that gives us some place to look so that we can get the student back on track.